you know what the story is behind it or? Um, I picked it up this spring. Yeah. And uh, it was just on the side of the road down at a neighbor's house. Gotcha. This was all that was out there. And I saw a motor with two handlebars on a stand and I said, <laughs> what the heck is that thing? Just curiosity, I brought it home because I figured I would get it running or whatever. And I looked it up, it says party blender on it. And uh, it looks like it was left on the back patio a day or two, huh? Yeah, or out in the garage or something. But cool. So I looked it up, they sold them for like $500. It's just a tailgate and blender. So like three weeks ago, after one of those storms, a lady's out shoveling the slush off the end of her driveway. I was out with my tractor cleaning, so I said, I'll take care of the heavy stuff for you, don't worry. She says, I found the blender top if you want that. Awesome. <laughs> so there it is. That's the cool. whole deal. And I think that's, you know, it just locks in. And uh, I think they were just sold as a tailgating <laughs> kind of blender type idea, you know? Well, it looks like it's going to be a fun project. I may yeah. even get to it today. I may try. Uh, oh, cool. Because it's, it's a. So if you look inside, you'll see the blades are a little dinged up in there. Yeah. That's probably from big ice or something they put in. But there's a nut that you could take off and straighten them back out. So. I think it'll run. It pulls over. I didn't check the gas tank. I didn't check a thing on it except just to see if it would pull, you know? Well, that's the fun part. And it does. So. Awesome. Cool. So you got these little screws. I believe you can loosen and widen the handlebars out. Because you're a big guy. There's you're your, making big drinks. You really want to get torqued out of your hands. There's your throttle. <laughs> and then there's your kill switch. So. Hey, awesome. Awesome. It looks like it'll be cool to work on, you know? Cool. Hey guys, how's it going? It's probably been about a month since I picked that up and uh, I am waiting on some parts for other projects and decided to go jump on the gas powered blender. <laughs> it's a unique thing in itself, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's definitely been sitting out in the weather. Uh, my guess is, you know, outdoors on a patio or like a bar that was outside and it just got so cruddy that it didn't fire up anymore and probably sat with bad gas in it is my hope. But uh, let's go see about what it would take to resurrect it if we can. If not, we'll figure out why it was thrown out, what failed on it. Looks like it's, it's wanting us to run a, uh, a high oil mix for the first 50, 50 hours. That's a lot of cocktails, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's go get set up and uh, start tearing into it see what we got. Oh, my busy, biggest suspect is going to be fuel issues. Yeah, ooh, that's so pretty. It's just as rusty. It's more rusty on the inside than it is on the outside. Can you see in there? Let me get you in. Hold on. Yeah, it's looking pretty scaly. It's looking like it's rotted out, but it's definitely scaly. I don't see any holes. Let's grab that air cleaner off of there. We'll pull the plug. Yeah, I've seen one of these before. We were down the Daytona Bike Week. And one of the stands. You know, one of the bathing suit babes will sit up in a stand making drinks. I wouldn't say that's terrible. I would suspect the carb is conjunctified, if that's a word. Funky air cleaner, huh? I don't think it was doing much. It wasn't sealing. That's a sign of gas coming out of the, the carb. Got a primer bulb on it. It's not petrified, but it's pretty close to the, the side of cracking. It's not cracked already. Yeah, still, still holding. Let's go put the plug in it. We'll give her a couple of kickovers. Let me see if there's any spark. Let me go grab a jumper wire. It's a weird feel. That's sideways on me. Hold on. We go grab a jumper wire for ground, the ground through the side of the plug, because this is all plastic. There's nothing to put up against. Yeah, we'll go right there. Yeah, 
Let's see if we get. Let's go turn it so that you can see it. You know it's gonna pop off right when I, I just hold it like a real man. <laughs> oh, we got spark. Nice. Good. You still have to worry about that part of it. Uh, I suspect the carb is going to be an issue though. So let's at least go dive into it a little bit. Let's go get. They have what. There's a diaphragm on the inside of it. All the small engine stuff. Generally has a. I don't even want to call it the material it's made out of. It's like a fabric impregnated rubber. Should say it the other way around. A rubber impregnated fabric that moves back and form, kind of works as the float bowl. But with today's modern fuel with the ethanol in it, it really rots them out and they get hard and brittle. Kind of like that's what I was looking at that primer bulb. Kind of. What is that? Why are you fighting me? I thread it into the gasket. There we go. It's got a throttle on it, see if that slide works. Yeah. That needle looks really nasty though. That's the right. And it's definitely got some corrosion around the of that needle. It's a, a different carb. I haven't seen it with the paint in the center. It's almost like a miniature motorcycle carb instead of a, a small engine carb. Let's go and get some of this stuff off of here. I'm going to get some needle nose. We'll get the throttle cable out. There goes the gasket. Let's go get some of these fuel lines off. One's going to be intake and one's a return. for that throttle 10 millimeter and a pair of needle nose push that spring back throttle back give us some cable like a little there's a little detent there it goes it's a little detent that it falls into. Don't even need the 10, 10 mil. We'll leave that right on there. Let's go over on the bench. We'll go pop it open, take a look inside and see what kind of shape it's in. Give her a good cleaning. Yeah, let's operate a little. Actually, I want to take a Sharpie and just mark right down the side of it. Just for alignment purposes. We know how everything kind of came apart. Generally, it only goes, can go one way, but it doesn't hurt. Those two are stuck together. These little flaps that you see here, they're like an intake and exhaust or little doorways for when the fuel comes in and when the fuel goes out. It's the actual fuel pump part of things. I don't know. I'm going to be gingerly at first and make sure that we're not destroying stuff. I don't know if I have a carb kit for it. And it is tearing the gasket underneath it. There we go. Get the film off. We're going to leave that gasket alone. That is on there. Sometimes it's the flexibility that are in these two that can cause a problem. If you have a one that like runs and dies, runs and dies right there they'll fail at that point but we still have a gasket 
in between these two. I see a screw in the center of that. I don't think that's a screw holding it together. I think that is just going to be a valve. I'm going to go get me a little tiny screwdriver. We're going to put some pressure in between these two. Give them to go crack loose if we can. Let's see if that'll go. There it goes. This is what that diaphragm should be. That hardens up. It actually feels pretty good. Yeah. Generally, you can become hard as a rock, and then they just do not throttle the fuel anymore. Like I said, it's, it's kind of... If you take a regular carb that has a, a float pole on it, this is pretty much what that is. The needle in the seat is the center of it. It allows fuel to go come in as it uh, fills up. It blocks off how much fuel can come in. More to it than that, but that, I'm just trying to give you an example. I'm going to go pull on it really quickly. See if we can get, get it apart without destroying it. Again, it's got... So if you tear it, what I want to try to do is get underneath it because there's no fuel on this side. The fuel is on the other side of it, and that's the area I want to clean. I'm going to look real quick, I think. Let's see, hold on, we might have it. I'm going to look real quick and see if I have a carb kit that will fit this. If I do... And I'm not going to be that concerned about it. If I do not, we are going to do our best to go clean from that side of it. I think I'm going to destroy that if I try taking it apart. This is a air fuel mix. It was a half, one. We're going to go call it one out. And I doubt that's going to be on the idle circuit. It's probably going to be on the main circuit. Would be my guess. Anything else you want to go take apart? This way, the, the slide really doesn't. I don't know if I want to take that out or not. We might be able to soak the whole thing in ultrasonic cleaner. Tear. <laughs> okay. There it goes. Yep, let me go see if I have a carb kit. My stash, my well organized. It's that one right there. Go cool. eyeball that one. That might be it right there. This feels like it's an old one that I took out of something. <laughs> That's it, but it's hardened up. So it's going to be that kit, whatever that kit is. I sometimes hold on to the old ones. Just in case you need like one piece or one gasket. Let's see if I just tore the outer gasket and I needed one. Nope. Nope. They're all the same. Let's go pick a little bit. This looks like it's a bunch of crap. Around it. I don't know if that's a jet that's glued in or if that's all nasty crap that shouldn't be there. My my guess is nasty crap that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> I think it's just varnished up fuel. So it has a little fuel filter, I'm gonna call it that, which is this screen right here. Let's see if we can get that out. I do believe we have another one, but I try not to wreck anything. Lost it. 
<laughs> Gone, never to be seen again. I think I see it on the floor. It's like a dentist. So that's our intake port. Let's um run some brake clean through it. And this. I would go back in, I think, through that side, because in through the diaphragm and down on the other side. It's our primer button, which is going to be a, a check valve, too. You get the air bubbles out. I'm going to go look for that filter real quick. See it? There it is. Escape from me, will you? A little bugger. Alright, where were we? We were picking. Not sure what that is right there. I'm gonna leave that well enough alone. My guess is either a check valve or a uh, jet. Meters how much. A jet is a a metering port that lets so much fuel go through. Let's uh, go find where the air fuel mix was. We're gonna go shoot some through there. And that's pretty much the same thing too. That's the idea of that is, just like I talked about with a jet, it meters how much fuel goes through. And so does a uh, mix screw. You're gonna choke off, generally you're gonna choke off how much fuel goes through, but it could be air also. I think we're clear on that. I wanna blow some air through all that. I wish I could take that apart, but I don't trust it. If we have a problem and we have to go back in, I will. But as for right now, I'm gonna leave that alone. There's a very light spring behind here and uh, like a needle in the seat, essentially. What is on the back side of it? I don't know if I could show you in a kit, maybe. So it's essentially that and that and then the center of that is pushing on here so this is what changes the uh your if i was going to compare it to a regular carburetor with a float on it that is the needle and seat capacity that's going up and down that's opening and closing that needle and seat right now i'm gonna take a little minute put that back together i don't see anything else i can probably get the q-tip i'll clean out the inside of that bulb and uh let's go do the Get you in the eye. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly say a thorough job, but again, if I didn't take it apart, that would have been hard as a rock and not done anything for us. But because I took it apart, it looks like it was fine. Let's go find out. Hey, what do you say, just for shits and giggles, we throw a little fuel in it, not the carb on it yet, a little squirt, <laughs> that might be a little too much. Well, we'll give her a yank over, see if she fires off. 
Probably should have done that first. Just so you can kind of listen to the thing, make sure it's not clackling away. Knocking away. Okay, got it. Ready to roll? Give a shot. <laughs> cool. All right, let's go get that carb on there. We gotta get that gas tank off. That gas tank is a piece of crap, so that's really gonna need to be addressed. It didn't sound ridiculously loud, neither, did it? All right. I think we got... Four screws holding it on. See if we can get them out. It's got a sticker on it. 814 of 07, so it's 14 years old. Let's go see if we can get the key line out of it. That grommet looks like it's seen better days too. And it's all corroded. That's not gonna seal fuel, there's a fuel filter. A little intake fuel filter, it's got a weight on it. He tries to hold that to the bottom of the tank. Let's see what we get for. So we had a rubber bean with a tag on it or something. Probably what we should use is. That's yeah, really rusty. The light's getting here or not. Let's try to kill it a little on the bottom. If we come in from the side, I do it. I know. I'd say what works good on that rust is a muriatic acid. I don't know if I have any here. I do have some somewhere. Let me go see what I can find. Surprised we didn't see a spider walking away. Judging by the. The home that was underneath it. Moving day. Back at my home stash. I know there's some apple cider vinegar, but I think that just takes really long. That's distilled white vinegar. I used it once before. But that'll work. So we'll grab that stuff and bring it back. And while we're back here, we might as well grab some other stuff, even just for future reference with that. I think this is fuel line. Might be a medical line. We use it. It's Tygon. So I put in a plastic tote just to limit the spillage damage just in case it uh, has some leak somewhere. I took a, a nylon glove and clamped it over where the fuel line comes out. Whether that's going to hold up to Aster or not, I do not know. And we're also going to go find out if this is new or used stuff. It looks like used to me. We're going to go right up to the top. Got to watch the breathing and the fumes of this stuff too. It's nasty. Uh-oh. I think we're over full. <laughs> We're just gonna have to let her rip. There you go. So I'm looking at that stuff and smelling it. And I have a feeling that's the same as that, <laughs> just in the other container. That smells just like the vinegar that's coming out of there. Whoops. I was probably meant to go you know, clean it up or throw it away or whatever it was. But <clears throat> that's why I'm not getting any kind of action out of that. That really should be really kind of be happening fairly quickly and I don't see anything happening. 
Hey, well, that was a fail on my part. But to redeem myself, <laughs> got a new jug of it. So you can go take this, pour it back in, and we'll pretend it never happened. What happens if you don't label stuff? The vinegar will work. It's just that it's so diluted that it doesn't have much performance to it. And time, it, it takes a, a really long time for it actually to function. I think I remember doing this on one of the, mo it was the, one of the mopeds, I think. We tried doing the tank and the, the tank was part of the frame you couldn't take it off i think that's what we used that on and i let it sit for i think it was like two or three weeks i just didn't cut it all right let's go try this again with some new goo back over by the machine let's go look into its operation a little bit better i want to see what that does if it's direct drive all right so that's not turning at all let's go grab a big screwdriver hmm. there may be the problem that does not turn i wonder if it has a clutch that's kind of boogered up Let's go operate a little bit. Let's um, take these four Allen heads out. You know what, before we go do that, let's go dump a little bit more fuel in it. We'll fire it up again. We'll see if this spins or not. See if there's an issue possibly with the, the clutch of it. Might be able to get away with getting a little shot right in the intake there. Let's see if that turns. I think we found a problem why it was thrown out. <laughs> it stopped mixing. All right, let's go dig into this and see what's underneath here for a clutch. Especially after taking that carb apart and not seeing anything really, you know, detrimental. I knew it was metric. Why am I going to the st standard pack? You think that one? Too big? I would think it would have like a setup, kind of like a uh, a better string trimmer. That or again, judging by how much rust is on the handlebars, I wonder if, if um, it sat up and, and it all filled up the water on the inside of it, and the inside of it just got locked up from that. My guess is the whole motor is going to fall out from underneath. That is locked up solid. So yeah, it looks like it goes into a clutch. Go hit the pull start real quick. Let me hit that with a Sharpie so you can see it. Give that a tug and see if it turns around. Now, so there's even a clutch lower than that because that's still not turning. We got this. Let's go see if this will turn. Oh, that's locked up. All right. So the project just got more interesting. <laughs> let's, um, let's see four more underneath there. What are they? Kind of look like Phillips, but they're probably not. 
Let's go see if they're GIS. Right, I'm gonna go find a better fitting screwdriver that's not doing it. And uh, see if we get that out, we gotta go look down below and see what the, there is for a clutch underneath there. Regular clutch, and that's locked up on the bearing. Oh, there it goes. Just need a little bit of love. She's a tad growly, though. You can see where water has gotten down inside there. Let's go blow that out with compressed air, and we'll soak some oil inside there. How does that motor look? What happens is as the motor revs up, these shoes will expand as the RPMs come up. These shoes will expand, catch that drum, and start spinning that drum. So at an idle, it's really not doing anything. And as you rev it up, it grabs, same as like, you know, any mini bike clutch setup, centrifugal clutch. These might be seized too. They might be seized on pivot points. Let's go jam a screwdriver in there. Let's see if they'll move. That one moves. Oh, this one. As long as they return too. Yeah, they seem to be okay. All right, let's go do a little bit of love to those bearings. See if we can get them to come back. If not, might have to take them out and possibly replace them. Looks like definitely it was flooded with water, huh? Let's go blow some of that rust out of there first. Get rid of the crap. Let that work its way down inside there. What is the breakaway? Yeah. Oh, she's a little growly. When it growls like that, that's getting better though, huh? <laughs> Definitely working its way in. Sometimes you can pop the race out. It's a little dust cover. That one's metal. You can get those dust covers out and uh, get right to the bearings and, and wash them. I believe that's going to have two bearings in it. Though. Probably one right there and one maybe down about three quarters of an inch which I don't think we're getting anything on right now. I'll let that one sit. This is the one that's really going to be an issue though. Right. Compressed air again. Let's go get some of that in there. We end up taking this one right apart, taking the bearings right out of it. I'm sure we can find bearings for it, but can do to hook onto the bottom of that. Let me go see what I can find to lock into the bottom some kind of something something to turn it, give it something a little spin on. Got a piece of flat stock. Let's see what that does, give us a little bit more. It's leaking out the bottom. Know that's a good sign or not. Oh, that's tight. 
I don't think the one that's facing us is the one that's an issue. I think it's going to be the one on the other side. Let's work her a little bit. Because was this facing upward or downward? Do you remember? There it goes. Yeah, she's going around. Crunchy though. Bitch, if I go backwards, it locks up. Sometimes you, you ride back over the rest. Call me a liar. Here she goes. <laughs> that is what that's supposed to be silent. <laughs> Let's um, get that snap ring off of there. Let's see if we can get down to that lower bearing. I think that's the one that needs a bunch of love. I think this one might be okay. Yeah, that, that's not gonna have long for this world. Think that'll tap right out of there? Of course not. I don't want to beat the end of that up. Let's try a... Think it's coming up? You think I'm driving into the bench? <laughs> Locating pin fill out. Yeah, it's not moving. Hmm. That's not going to do us any good. It has to go out that way. Throw a little heat on, but we're going to cook it. We could press on it too, but I'm afraid of cracking stuff. Hmm. I might just put it. I might put it in the uh, parts washer. And we'll let the fluid kind of soak, like, you know, submerge it so that this cavity fills up. It's still not ideal though. We've got to get into the bearing. See how the rust is kicking out of that one? I'm not spinning it. we got to kind of do the same for the, uh, the lower one. Let me go screw around it a little bit. I'm going to get something to lay on top of here, like a piece of copper or brass. We'll give her a couple more taps and see if we can get it to move. The other thing too, it's not really good to hit across a bearing, not that these are in good shape. It moved some, we're lower than the snap ring. We're committed now, at least we should be. There she is. It's all one bearing. So our issue is just the one that is there. Let's go get that snap ring out. We'll take that bearing right out of there. And I need the pliers that go the other way. See, that's got the same motion. Some of them you could switch around. And now it does the opposite. Now it squeezes it together.
gonna go take this whole thing and soak it right in oil. Actually, just go blow it out with an air gun. The more you can get, the more of the crap you can get out of there. Lift your foot. There you go. The more of the crap you can get out of there. Better off you are. Or else it just kind of, what happens is you get a piece of crud or rust in there and it makes a scratch and that scratch makes a scratch and it keeps going over and over itself and those scratches are that white noise that you hear the growling is a ball with damage on it going over a race with damage on it or debris so you get all the debris off of them This guy's pretty cooked, but. Like I said, sometimes you can pop the seal out of the side of it. I don't know if you could do that one on this. Wait for the compressor to turn off. Of course, at the house, I have a toolbox that's full of like bearings and bushings. I don't have that here. Not that I don't mind taking a ride again. Grab a coffee. But there's a number on the bearing. It's like 6202Z. This is the one. I'm going to stab myself in the finger trying to get this out. That's not going to come out of there. The plastic ones come out pretty easy. So get those handlebars off. And we can clean some of that hardware up. It's not adjustable. It looks like it's just for maybe shipping. Maybe probably the box that it came in. So if you do the same for the, the throttle side. I think the plastic's gonna strip out before the threads turn. There we go. Yep, good. I thought that was gonna turn in there. Then out of the way. Little baby Phillips. That's the kill switch. I think this is probably like a, a just like a regular bicycle neck. It has a couple screws from underneath that pinch it down. We can take this off and we'll get that off. Maybe wire wheel those handlebars up. Let's see what it's got holding it. Four screws. Yeah, right on the verge of snapping. That one. Oh.
Got him. There's our prize. <laughs> Grab by the antlers, they say. Let's go hit that with the wire wheel. What do you think? Leave him alone or paint him? Maybe you shoot him black. Silver always looks like crap. I don't know if I want to go with silver. Maybe we'll just paint him black. Yes, no? So I wiped it down. I find that spray away glass cleaner, non ammonia, is really good for stripping away any oils that are on it. Sometimes I find it even better than wax and, wax and grease remover. And then mist on a coat. Let that tack up a little bit. Let that sit up for about five, 10 minutes and I'll give it a good heavy one. I also cleaned that top surface up and I already had sprayed some uh, breakaway on the top. So I'm gonna use that for the polishing agent. I think we'll leave those rusty screws in the corners alone. I'm not taking them out. The legs look pretty good. They're all like a hammer finish on them. The top is kind of like a satin black. You can see where it had that blue protective film. There's still some hanging. You know, it's made and you're supposed to peel it off. I'm gonna throw a friend of mine under the bus right now. He had a, a welding helmet. <laughs> right now he's laughing, I know he is. <laughs> had a welding helmet that had the protective film over the lens trying to use it and it's like this helmet sucks. It still had that plastic over the, the edge of it. That's right. I've done things like that too. Just try to keep it off a of video. Okay, they maybe put a drop of oil. Let's go throw some uh, let's go throw some oil down inside there. It'll probably work its way right into the to the guts of the throttle. Actually feels pretty good now though. Good new. And round two. A little heavier though. I should do it. And I'm back in the homeowner's dungeon because back in that corner, that toolbox is just full of bearings. I do not think any of them are gonna be metric. I'm not sure if this one's metric or not, but uh, we are gonna go hunt and see. We, we weren't gonna get that lucky, were we? We're gonna go hunt and see real quick, see if I have any ones that will fit that. And then if not, I'm gonna go try to find some new ones in the morning and go from there. 
Yeah, someday this toolbox needs to go over there. We got a bunch up there. Let's go. I didn't bring a caliper with me. I got the SEMA ID. Probably should look at the number, huh? Might, <laughs> might be able to go by the actual number on it. That looks really close, except for it's got the groove in there for the snap ring, but that doesn't matter. Okay, another one. We might be 50% of the way there. I'm gonna go search through those, see if I can find one. Well, I found one, what did I do with it? I think it's that box right there. <laughs> did I put it back? Yeah. So that one, I think is the same. And it's gotta find one more. doesn't look like it. Oh. Well, I already got two. Let me go see if I can find one that doesn't have that clip on it. It's actually the next day. I didn't really want to let it set this long, but let's see what we get. Let me pour the, the acid out. Oof. Get a little of that in your nostrils. Yeah, but look how clean she is on the inside. I am gonna go rinse that with water. That kind of neutralizes it, the water. That is spotless. I don't know if I can do with anything with the outside of the tank. We just kind of clean it up. Either that, we could paint it black like the handlebars. When we get that whooshed. So we have those bearings that we grabbed I believe that is one of them right there, which seems like it would be okay for the OD. Unfortunately, not so good for the ID. And as far as a blender is concerned, you're looking for stirred, not shaken. And uh, that would give the opposite of us. They're gonna be jumping around all over the place. So I went to the parts store and I was able to find the correct set that goes in there. So we'll go with those. We're going to push them in. The thing about races, like if you're going to go drive this in, you don't want to drive on this surface. You want to drive on that surface. You don't want to hammer across the bearing surface. Sometimes you don't have a choice, but if you do, you really want to do that because that can damage the bearings. You put like little flat spots in the balls. So we're like that. I could hammer on that. I'm pushing directly on the surface that's having the rub. So, uh, and vice versa. If you wanted to uh, drive the inside, like when I go to drive, where is it that? When I go to drive this in to the center, I'm gonna wanna put a socket on this surface right here and drive the center down into it so that I'm not driving it across it or pushing the, uh, the bearing back out. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time. I'm gonna go change that out and I'm also gonna go change that noisy one out too. We got two of them and I'll bring you back. Kind of speed this up a little bit, shall we? Both those bearings are changed out. The bottom half is bolted onto the motor and these two locating pins have to go on those two locating pins. And I think we gotta get up over the hill here. I think we're in now. And I had those four Phillips screws in it. They might have been lock sided. 
I would think with all the vibration you would do that because there's no, like the, the bottom you had lock washers. There's no lock washers on this and it's a tapered fit. I'll keep an eye on it. If I find that it's loosening up over time, that's what I'll do. But I'd rather leave it now without the Loctite in case, just in case you need to take it apart. See if you've got one that fits a little, you can crank down on. Oh, right, we've got handlebars we could put back on and the grips. Then we can get the carburetor. stuff I went shopping for was a carb kit didn't have it grommet they didn't have it fuel line they kind of had it I'm guessing that's gonna be fairly close so, one out of three isn't that great the one problem I do know this fuel line is really not the fuel line but the uh, grommet when it was in the tank did not have a very snug fit to it. it was kind of slopping around I'm sure it's gonna leak gas there I'm gonna try uh, soaking this in hot water and see if it just gets a little bit of its pliness back so I'm gonna go up heat up some water in the microwave and let's go boil that a little see if it does anything should be hot enough let's pop it out of there see if that softened up yeah, pretty good at least it's squishy now but I don't know if it's gonna the lines out last thing you want is water in it right get it with a nice clean rag <laughs> maybe we're gonna leave those lines in there i don't trust the size of the ones i got Let's see if this fits yeah see how sloppy that is in there And it's definitely going to be a leak at a fuller amount on the tank. I don't really know what we can kind of do to get around that. Anything you kind of put on them, anything you put on them kind of melts with the gas. I'm going to let that soak for a while. Worst case, we're going to have to go with that. And I'm going to have to do a little bit of searching online. Everything's all screwed up. There's the middle of the country. Snowstorm, ice storm, whatever you want to call it, came through, power's out. So I got stuff I ordered two weeks ago. It's supposed to be here in like two or three days, and I still haven't seen it. So everything is uh, on a wait. So unfortunately, when that happens, when we start working on projects like this, we got to do the best we can with what we got. But at least you have something to work with, right? At least we got new bearings. Everything else is kind of easy. You can change it right on the machine. You just... And the part comes in, pop a couple lines off, change that. And what was the other thing? Oh, the carb kit. If we need it, we don't know yet if it'll run on that carb. And I don't know what we can do to expand that or wrap around it. Any kind of like Teflon tape or anything you go to try to build is not going to uh, stay. It just kind of melts away. You need something that is like fuel savvy. But Popped out of the heat. I'm like, what if I just take it and kind of like stretch on it a little bit will that help us thing is too i think when it cools off it's just gonna harden back up i'm gonna go try that a little bit more see if it gets gets us anywhere let's see what we get i got an idea and let me know what you think what if 
So we know that the circle part of it's not going to work. You know, we're not going to catch tension as far as the edge. But what if we took some like mechanics wire and we wrap it around the outside and we pull the yeah. What if we wrap some wire around here and we kind of pull it upward so that there's tension and at least the inner lip will be like up against the side of the tank? Think that'll work for us? If we just if we wrap it around, that'll pull that space out and the lip that's on the inside will uh, kind of just be up against the side of the tank. May not be perfect, but definitely be better than what we got. And we gotta make sure that that sits on the bottom of the tank so it sucks up fuel. All right, we'll give it a shot. It's only dumb if it doesn't work, right? Let's see if we can get that in there. What do you think, two times around maybe? Damn it. Get under there. I'll go one more where it matches up. So you can get one more out of it. They will tie it together, you know. Do one of these. Get rid of some excess. Think that did anything? I think it made it worse. That's pretty good. I mean, we just got to make sure the gas line is sitting downward. Let's get rid of all this crap. Like that. Actually, if we blow in it, cover these lines. I think it might be just fine. It looks like we got it in a decent spot it's sitting on the bottom of the tank That's a little bit of oil I put in there just to keep the tank from flash rusting after I rinsed it out with the water So uh, the coating the tanks, you know, you do like a motorcycle gas tank and you put the, the coating stuff in afterwards I kind of have uh, second uh, Thoughts on that. I think sometimes it does more damage than good I think I may just try going with just leaving the tanks raw and keeping fuel in them see how they hold up compared to the other stuff because I've, I've had uh, some problems where it's lifted and just made a mess of the tank and once it's in here it's kind of screwed so we'll see how that works out for us yeah, I was gonna get some 50 to 1 because that's what I have that should be enough go see if it takes a prime that's snow falling off the roof it's like raining out and there it goes shall we give her a yank see what we get chokes on iron hole <laughs> that ain't good. We got something bound up. That turns out I don't know if it's in the clutch. I got something wrong. Just when you thought it was safe. It's my comment about Loctite and the screws. Can't picture what I got screwed up. 
Apparently it's something though, huh? Still does not turn. I got something bound up on the clutch. What did I assemble incorrectly? That side of the clutch turns. So the drum, the drum must be hitting something. I'll bring you back when that's apart. Loosen the screws and it pulls over now. So yeah, I got something bound up in the drum. I was almost tasting victory too. So it happens when you get cocky. Yeah. If it was something obvious, you guys have probably been writing the whole time. And you forgot something or missed something. not blatantly obvious to me yet. I don't know, because that's sitting right on it. And I could spin it. So no interference as far as that's concerned. I mean, it's weird, huh? It's like there's enough air gap there. I don't think that is hitting anything up top. Get those screws out. Do we have the wrong screws in the wrong place? Would they be too long? What would they run into? If they run down into there, I think that's it. Do you think I'm running them down so far that they're running into the top of the motor? It's gotta be. Which was one other four screws that I not have hmm I'm gonna go take a peek see if I can look underneath the little lip there see if there's any uh, dents or scratches that are in there keeping it from turning yep that's it I can see where they bottomed out there two places there and there one didn't have a washer on it I don't know if I lost it I did put another washer on it but it was more than one that was hitting what was the other four screws that we can take? Is these? Did I have those in the wrong place? <laughs> you idiot. So those, there's the missing washer. <laughs> All right. I was thinking because of the taper, did they not look like that has the taper to it to you? Backpedaling. But I see a I see a washer inside there. That's the washer that's missing. So those would go in there, and those a little bit more, a tad bit more snow slash ice falling off the roof were in there. Man, that looks stupid, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but I'm the dumb one. All right, we got it. Let me go put it back together.
Try it again. Well, there's your problem. Does not that look like it should be that way? <laughs> it's a joke. I do not believe so. But that's how it was. And again, those uh, tapered spots up top. I wonder if they had the wrong screws when they were making it. Because why would it have... I make excuses, can you tell? Why would it have a bevel there and then down below an area to sit with no bevel? That's the one that I don't need. Again, it's a day later. <laughs> Any more excuses I can put on it? That's all right. I think we're ready to give her a shot again. Let's go get the air out of the system again. Choke's on. Can you guys see? You can see. Give her some gas. Adjust that air fuel pump. Need me a little screwdriver. Sounds like it's rich. Let's go run it in a little bit. Try it again. Couldn't turn on my fingers. Here. All right, let's go uh, look into the hopper, get that squared away. I'm not quite sure what went on down there. She looks a little on the chop. Actually, the nut's loose. Let's see if we can get that right out of there. A little nylon spacer. You think just kind of hammer that flat again? See if there's anything going on at the bottom there. You wouldn't think they all need to be on the same plateau, right? You think each one could be on a different, a different angle. So if it's trying to chop something, each one's on a different pitch. I wouldn't think they'd be all even. I don't know what is the mixer. What's the mixer like? I don't know. I, mean, we, I think we just hammer the base of that flat, maybe, so the nut will kind of like lock on it. And we'll call it a win. Anything else in there? What if that comes? I think there's got to be some kind of seal in there, too, right? We're going to find out if that leaks. Yeah, I'm going to go just hammer that flat. 
get a ratchet down in there. We'll tighten all the hardware up and see how it does. You can get a couple of rat -a tats on that. Let's see if that got it. They're still loose in there. I don't know if how much threads there are to go run down. They gotta be tight. They can't be floating in there. Because if they're floating, they're gonna chew up the, the key that's holding them, you know? Check it a little tighter. That's all it's got. Back apart. I think the lock washer. It might be the lock washer is just not sitting right. So what happens is everything is just stacking up on there, but there's still too much room. I don't know. There might have been another blade that is missing. Again, it was loose, so we don't know. Uh, so the the nut and the jam are locking up. They're getting run down all the threads, but it just there's too much play underneath. So I'm going to actually take a washer. And I'm going to file it so that it will fit down over the, just like, essentially I'm going to try to make it look like that so that it fits over, takes up the last little bit of gap that's in there. Plus probably support it a little bit better. Seems like kind of crappy. It's probably why it bent in the first place, you know, and uh, see if we can get all of that together. I think that might do it. Oh, if not, we'll put you in there. <laughs> I think we got it. They're not rattling around in there anymore. Now the next thing is, it's gonna hold fluid. Let's try some hot water. This pisses out the other end. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> All right, let that set up a little bit. See how that does. Actually, I'm probably gonna go up to the sink. I'll fill that up about halfway with water. And uh, we'll pop it on or fire it up, see what it does. You see, she fires up with no choke and no throttle. It's clean. That ought to be a little bit of a dishwasher action. Oh, well, that's a beer. <laughs> that sink will be clean too, huh? Now, if that was only a beverage, at least the container is clean now. Well, that was fun for cleaning it up pretty good. Let's go fire it up one more time. Air cleaner's all put back together, everything's all buttoned up. <laughs> it's so stupid, isn't it? <laughs>
<laughs> well, guys, with that, I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me. Y'all, welcome to join me this summer for margaritas on the pontoon boat. <laughs>